A sense of Britishness, what I used to think it was, was a sense of inclusion and a sense of cohesion and I don't know if I know what a sense of Britishness is anymore. We, living in, in the North East, didn't want to lose Scotland because the North East didn't really feel like they had an effective voice and it would have been, been a great loss for the, the North East if we had lost Scotland at that point. Scotland votes to stay in the United Kingdom. We keep membership of the European Union. We also um, keep shipbuilding on the River Clyde. Firstly, it sounds like a lot of, of what was promised during the campaign hasn't actually been, been, been delivered for Scotland. I suppose the mo most important thing was, was Brexit. It felt like I, like I didn't know the country that I loved anymore. And no wonder people are, are angry and feel disenfranchised. It's, it's totally understandable, but it just seems to have been, been, been channeled towards the EU and, and, and immigrants. There's utter alienation with Westminster and with Brussels, and that lies behind this large Brexit vote. You know, to, to not, not feel, feel safe in your, in, in your home, and that psychological safety is, is just so important. And after, after 18 years where, where we had worked with some of the most difficult people in this country, that wasn't good enough just because of where, where I was born. We, we saw a very, very different direction, sound leadership from the Scottish Government. And we voted to renew our reputation as an outward-looking, open and inclusive country. That EU citizens such as myself made a, a, a valuable contribution. At that point, that was when we decided that we were absolutely for Scottish independence. I'd always want, want to live in Scotland. It, it feels like home. It feels very, very, very Scandinavian. It's, it's, it's beautiful. The way I see it at present, Scotland has a very bright future. And it's an inclusive future that makes you feel want to be part of it and go forward with Scotland. I'd like to imagine that, that an independent Scotland is the beacon that allows the North East to step out the shadow of London. And if we vote leave on June the 23rd, we can take back control of £350 million a week and spend on our priorities here in this country, including on the National Health Service, we can take back control. Britain's departure from the European Union is projected to deliver a severe blow to the country's healthcare system. The National Health Service, the NHS, already suffers from serious staff shortage and Brexit is expected to make it even worse. That is because the withdrawal from the EU will force overseas medics to either stay away or leave the country. There's something like 85,000 vacancies, a lot of them for, for, for skilled workers. And, and even though we, we, know, we, we now we've got some, some sort of vague, I suppose, assurances, reassurances that, um, that, that we will be able to stay, that's not, it's quite, quite, quite a low bar being able to stay in a country, it's about attracting the right, right people. We have been referred to as um, wholesale imported people. We have been referred to, you know, in, in terms of swarms of people coming, coming to this country. And it's, it's very dehumanising language. And, and Scotland is, is, is really dependent on, on, on skilled, and I suppose unskilled, labour from, from, from abroad, we are, we are seeing a lot of people leaving and, 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 and that, that could be catastrophic. There was a conservative estimate of something like 500 million in terms of health care that yeah. it would cost for the expats to come back to this country that are picked up by the countries that they're living yeah. in. Yeah. So it, 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 it's inconceivable this, oh yeah, well, let's control our borders, we'll get rid of all the EU nationals and all the expats can come back, but then if you look at the age range of expats, they're all over 65, they all have significant health problems, coexistent morbidities that end up having a huge impact, that needs social services, and needs council help, that are all going to be arriving back in the country in one big lump. Whilst all the trained people 
the educated people who are bringing in tax revenue, who are doing jobs, are all going to leave the country. Every Medicare Complete member has a story. This is Charlie's. When I first looked at this plan, it just looked too good to be true. I, I don't know if I know what a sense of Britishness is anymore. Because it's a good country, because it's great that people want to live here, and now it just seems to be an awful cacophony of small-minded people complaining about stuff that they have no understanding of. So, I'm not sure Britishness, I don't think it exists anymore. 2017 has been a year of progress for the United Kingdom. In January, I set out our objectives for the Brexit negotiations. And in the months since, we have pursued them with steady purpose. We used to, as, as Danes, have this... We really, really, really looked up to this country. But the iconic hashtag blue passport will return after we leave the European Union in 2019. Modern Britain, in all its diversity, compassion and strength, that was shared around the globe. But, but that, that, that's changed dramatically over the last year. And I suppose um, initially people were kind of waiting to see what, 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 what great trick the UK had had up its sleeve, um, because surely they couldn't they could they couldn't do something like that, you know, something as reckless with no 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 plan. There must have been something there, um, but now that it, it turns out that actually there isn't a plan, people are really really losing losing faith in in in, in the UK as a brand. Um, it's being being seen as really quite unreliable. And I acknowledge that the words I used were open to being misinterpreted and I apologise. I apologise to Mrs Zagari Ratcliffe and her family. So the government hasn't undertaken any impact assessments no. on the implications for leaving, of leaving the EU for different sectors of the British economy. Mm. Um, so there isn't one, for example, on the automotive <coughs> sector? On the automotive no, sector? No, not that I'm aware of, no. Is there one on aerospace? Not I'm aware of, no. no. It's being, being, being seen as... Um, not a, a, a safe place for, um, for, for people to, to, to live and work. The impact of that can't, can't be underestimated and, and that's another, another reason why, why I really, really very, very strongly feel that, that Scotland need, needs to separate itself from, from that. The Scottish brand is, um, is, is really quite highly regarded um, in, in Scandinavia and in, in the rest of Europe. And I think it would, be, it, would be, it would be a real shame for Scotland to miss out on that. But I think there's, a, there's quite, probably quite a, a small window of opportunity for that to happen and Scotland shouldn't allow itself to be, to be dragged down. The analysis that we published today is more detailed and extensive than anything so far provided by the UK government. And that in itself speaks volumes about their reckless and irresponsible approach. Scottish people have the right to be asked which do you prefer, being in the EU with prosperity or going down the drain with the UK? Absolutely no doubt that they could be successful. If you look at the model of small countries around Europe, um, Scotland fits perfectly into that, into that sort of scheme. Uh, the likes of Denmark, Sweden, Norway. I think the opportunity, resources and planning that are available to Scotland. Scotland hasn't franchised its education. Scotland delivers an education for the people that live there to allow them to contribute and develop the country. Um, if you look to England, most people can't afford to go to university now. If they do, they're, they're in debt for years. The, the funding that provides people while they're on the courses has been franchised out. Everything has been sold and Scotland has the opportunity as a small country and a well-planned future to make the best of what's available to it. You're still saying they. <laughs> you need to say we. <laughs> we, we, we. Well, we're seeing that independence is a way forward and we've only been here a short while. Earlier, I keep hoping to have the Dallas ending where Bobby isn't actually dead. He's oh. just in the shower. <laughs> like, tomorrow I'm going to wake up and Bobby will be in the shower and everything will be fine.
but it is fine. We're in Scotland. We'd yeah. heard a lot about how um, how how English people were were treated in Scotland, so we were well prepared. We had um, we had a, a I suppose a repertoire of. Um, Assertive and snappy and funny comebacks for when 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 people inevitably inevitably would would be be angry as us for being English, but um, we've still got them. It hasn't happened yet. They're still in wrapper. I know. <laughs> we were so well prepared as well. No, people have been absolutely amazingly welcoming. Um, I, I, I can't I can't say that enough. It's we we, we live in Dundee now and. And, and the people are just uh, absolutely lovely, really interested in where, 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 where we're from. We've been, been engaged in a lot of really, really interesting discussions and, and, and debates. But no, we've never experienced anything like that. And, and, and I certainly haven't had, had any kind of problems being, being an EU national either. So yeah, it's really positive. So I'll be voting yes, because I believe in Scotland. I'll be going yes because I believe it's the only way for Scotland to have some sort of success and be the country it deserves to be.